Good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome to Mahala Monday. Absolutely awesome to have you with us uh, today. We are here and we have a guest. We have a guest that we're going to be talking to our guest in just a short little bit. But firstly, Rona, how are you doing? I'm doing well, Dugan. Oh, That's word. all right. My it's name weekend. changes from you, time to time. It, it was weekend, Dougal, so I'm still recovering. <laughs> Uh, that's good. That's good. I'm glad you are happy and I'm glad you are all watching us because this is a show you definitely don't want to miss. Now, let me just tell you uh, how excited we are about having this very special guest here sitting between us today. Because firstly, there is so much. There's, I've actually worked out a little bit of an intro for you, so just ayo, ayo. allow me. Yeah, well, I love that about Dougal. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> He's uh, good. Uh, okay, now, well, now it's not going to work. It's not going to work. The press is too much, but be as it may. For the past couple of weeks, you know this, we've been uh, showcasing South Africans who's been doing absolutely amazing things. And today is definitely another one of those. And dare I say the proof is in the pudding, but I'll explain why I say that a little bit later. But somebody that needs very, very little introduction, somebody that has been an inspiration for so many people, somebody that has taken other people and placed them on the map. Oh, yeah, yeah, there. Ladies and gentlemen, he is here. Man extraordinary, the side card is joining us. Good morning, sir. How are you? Thank you very much. Morning, everybody, and I'm really excited to be here. Yeah, it's yeah. been uh, two years of darkness, and here we are. <laughs> so true, so true. Listen, it is absolutely brilliant having you here. There's so much we want to talk to you about, because uh, as you know, this is an interactive show, and we look forward to your comments, your questions. Oh, yeah. is, yeah, he's going to answer it for you straight away. But there's so much we want to talk about with him today, of course. And just a reminder, of course, the details to get in touch with us at the bottom of your screen. You will see it there, uh, Nikkei Productions on Facebook and YouTube. And we look forward to all of that and what we're going to talk about today oh, is yeah. uh as always we talk about inspirational stories oh, yeah. you know stories that really drives us as humans and and, and kindles that one thing that we all have that that human spirit that that just comes out and does something amazing but let me just start off and let's just talk <laughs> about what you have done because everything you have done seem to be centered around that sort of amazing you human spirit i mean obviously the pandemic has yeah, been yeah. has been huge now huge. a lot of you and everybody on the planet would know about a publication called the next 48 hours oh yeah which was absolutely brilliant this is it the, i'm 48 i'll always be 48. <laughs> <laughs> you'll stay 48 for the rest of your life the next 48 hours which was absolutely amazing. an amazing an amazing publication oh, and yeah. uh there we have yeah th that's your family right that's correct um the 48 hours publication was our opportunity to enjoy Cape Town, but at the same time, share those experiences so everybody else can enjoy Cape Town. Yeah. We, we, we came here 20 years ago, and the thinking was, we came as visitors, we, it became our home, and we wanted to enjoy the space. Yeah. Exactly. And, and 48 hours was about that. It's, it shared our experiences, and it shared what people can enjoy in the city. Yeah. It worked, it worked very well, and Sadly, pandemic came knocking on our doors two years ago. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and let's be honest, because the, the, the next 48 hours was a very, very successful publication. Because if you were taken serious as an artist, you were in there. And you were in there. Then That's you were in there. Yeah, I mean, we were focused. We were a niche publication. In fact, when I started it in 2004, in 2005, the Sandman Press Awards, we submitted an entry as a publication. And the judges didn't know what to do with us and created an award called the Best Niche Publication in South Africa. Are you oh, serious? Wow. Because we were not a newspaper, we were not a magazine. Our focus was entertainment. Yeah. Mm. And that's all we did. You know, we focused on the arts, we focused, uh, focused on culture, and we allowed artists a space that showcased their work and made it stand out. So you're yeah. not in the mainstream buzz you exactly. were focused you were on the stage that we created in a publication and it mattered it helped so many careers along the way no it certainly did look i i can attest to that because yeah. i want to brag here because i was in this more than once a couple of times there was a couple of photos but the, most of the time there was just names so we'll talk about that because i'm still upset about it but uh, but but it's okay but and this is the thing because yeah. if you were in it you were you you could be taken seriously because this is it your focus mm -hmm. i mean when you review shows when you showcase new events when there was festival to talk about oh, yeah. or any any run at any theater or it was absolutely extraordinary. And I mean, this was a very, very successful yeah. publication. I, 
much much admired. Mm -hmm. So even for me, I mean, I'm looking and I'm thinking now, it was our Google back then, basically, where you want to know what's happening in Cape Town. Yeah. This was the magazine you had to run to, the newspaper you basically had to run to. I looked forward to, on a Friday, 48 hours on the polls, and I'm like, oh, I'm going to go get my papers now. Just to be able to see what's happening the weekend, because I loved your stories, I loved the ideas. I actually loved 48 hours. It was really brilliant. I mean, it's important that, you know, you, you when you want to focus... Um, on something, and, and I'm going to share something with you that when I came up with the concept and I took the publication for printing, my printers felt this won't succeed. In fact, oh. one of the biggest printers in Cape Town told me these things don't last for more than two months. Oh my. And 17 years later, mm. we were still around. So there you go. <laughs> Did you still so use the same Follow your time. dream, eh? Oh follow, yeah. your dream. follow your dream. Follow your dream. Oh yeah. And oh yeah. do what you have to do to make it work because that's what you're about. Exactly. Yeah. Don't let other people... As I said, it was the biggest printer in this town told me it won't work. And, and the second biggest printer in this town dropped me. Our first edition was scheduled for a Thursday. On the Monday evening, I get a, a note saying, we won't be able to print you on Wednesday night. Oh, wow. So those were challenging times. Wow. Eh? wow. But wow. You, you, you make a plan and you get things done. Yeah. yeah. Brilliant. And you Brilliant. certainly got it done because, uh, as I mentioned earlier, I mean, this publication was exceptionally successful and it was well respected and, and 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 in that industry that is the one thing that is probably the most important commodity the respect that that mm. that, that that you enjoyed uh, you know respect is something you earn mm. and with whatever you do whether you making a plate of food whether you printing a publication whether you're managing a small event you must do it at the best and deliver proper premium quality service. Yeah. Exactly. You earn respect through that, not the money and how much you get. Mm -hmm. It's about what you deliver as a professional. Mm -hmm. That matters more than anything else. We were very fortunate to manage to work through that, earn that respect, and lots of time people asked us, or asked me, you know, you, you're a small publication, and, and there's nothing wrong with that. We were mm -hmm. a 12-pager, we came out every week, eventually we were every second week. But ultimately what we did with that publication earned our seat at the table. Oh, yeah. Definitely. And out of that, Definitely. more opportunities came. Yeah. And Definitely. that's what you have to do. Exactly. What you have, you can use that, make it powerful enough that it'll open other doors. Mm. And oh, it certainly it. did. It certainly did. I mean, I, I, I look fondly and like, remember now, and it is actually now, now that I really miss the publication. <laughs> <laughs> now that I know, because, you know, now that yeah. I really missed the publication. And it was a very, 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 very well-respected, very, very, just extraordinary publication. I mean, I know so many people who contributed to it, and uh, some of them did write some really cool stuff as well. Oh, um, my yeah. word. <laughs> so very well done. But then, mm, pandemic. Pandemic. The world changes. Oh, yeah. Sounds the world like changes. World the pandemic, yeah. obviously, had huge effects on the next 48 hours. Absolutely. Mm. I mean, I remember the first announcement that the president made. It was a Sunday evening, and he said, we're going to go down into a lockdown. Mm. Uh, it was a soft lockdown, but events were stopped. Theatres were mm. limited. Uh, and I think this was around 15th of Feb. Mm. And events were all limited down and... The next morning, on the Monday, I started getting cancellations on ads that were booked for the next month, two months. Mm. By the Wednesday of that week, we basically had to say, we're not going to print anymore, because that's it. It just, everything stopped. And I can understand, and, and whoever made those decisions, all the event organizers, uh, the promoters, they did it well, because we didn't come out of this thing. It's now two years later. We're still exactly. sort of finding our feet to get out of this. So for us, we had to stop everything we were doing mid-February 2020. And uh, as an industry, events, theatres, shows, arts and culture, that industry uh, up to now has been left <laughs> at the bottom end. Oh, it's, yeah. The, so very little support has come through. Mm. Um, and all the artists, everyone in that ad space, is still trying and I think in the last six months we're managing to get there mm. and it's also uh, shows like this that is opening opportunities and doors for people like us to come back and say we can get back in the game let's find ways to do things mm. differently oh, yeah. uh, and that's why we're here today yeah yeah no, it certainly is so that that was the last publication of the next 48 hours yeah that was I think it was uh, 
the first week of Feb 2020 was yeah. the last publication. Yeah, if memory serves, we went into the 26th of March or something. That was the hard lockdown. But a I mean, it was lockdown. like, yeah, it was, it was mm. building up. So all of a sudden, then everything changes. Yeah. Because oh, yeah. that, that is your income. That is your mm. livelihood. That is your business. Yeah, now I you mean, have to reinvent yourself. Yeah, exactly. I mean, there we go. Stop everything. You, you stop your business. You don't know what's going to happen. Mm. You know, I say darkness. Mm. It's, somebody switched the lights off. And now you have to find your way. Because even at that time, TERS was just an announcement. Mm. It wasn't <laughs> a reality. Exactly. I'm talking March, April. Lots of talk, lots of that. Um, and even my staff, we didn't know how we're going to manage the situation. Mm. And so for the first two months that March, April, we just sat at home. Um, hard lockdown came. You were limited in terms of how much, you, how much time you could go out and buy things and do things. Uh, you, restaurants were closed, all of that. And what we did during that time as a family, um, we had to start doing things indoors. Mm. Um, we liked food, so we used to cook and bake bread. We baked our bread daily. Wow. during that time because it was something that you're sitting at home and you had the time and we had the time <laughs> and so after breakfast we'd need we'd put our bread, uh, dough together leave it aside so by lunch you're ready to bake um so yeah you know we it's it's trying to do things uh, and for us food was a common thing yeah. and we just started playing around with and then as you you know we will see later that what came out of those mm. experiences. Oh yeah, so it, it really came down to the fact that you had to re-look and reinvent the wheel for yourself and even for your family at that point because obviously, I mean, they're all grown in that as well. What do you do? And I mean, I'm quite excited because of the fact from a boardroom to a kitchen. I mean, this excites me at the end of the day. And what, what really got to me and why I wanted to do this interview as well is because of the fact that a lot of people tend to see the gloom on COVID, having to figure out, oh, which way now? And the fact that you just did a complete swap change of career i mean my word i'll take my hat off to you not everybody can do this and i admire you for that definitely thank, thank you thank you you know uh, it's it's this whole thing about our our uh, our mindset oh yeah and the stereotyping that you know i got a degree then i'm gonna sit in an office <laughs> um, i was a director of a company so i can only be a director of a company and unfortunately that's not what it is and yeah. pandemic if you didn't manage to pivot it's not too late, you can still do it, oh, but yeah. pandemic has taught us that you can't do the same things the way you did it. Oh yeah, yeah. oh yeah. You've got to be oh, through yeah. it, but... And even now, two years later, if you still haven't realized it, stop now. Think about it. And really, that's the reality. You can't live the way you did two mm. years ago. It's, it's like a war. Mm. And now you, you have to reshape your landscape. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And that's what it's about. Oh, and for yeah. us, we we spend the two two months at home baking cooking and when they announced that on the first of may 2020 restaurants could open on a yeah delivery, delivery. basis so That's you can't right. have sit downs exactly you could do delivery and we then decided to start the house of care Oh, wow. I must I must share this. In 2017, we played with the concept of a house of care. Oh. And if you go back to the Facebook page, yeah. about, it was actually started in 2017. Okay. So what happened is we always played around with food. We always hosted people at home. We cooked and had fun with it. In fact, when, when the international chefs came for the Good Food and Wine show, some of them came and, and played around with us. And, and, you know, we cooked and we ate and that oh, sort of lovely. thing. Oh, lovely. So in 2017, there was friends on social media asked us about our food. How can they get it? How can they taste it? And they teased. So we then started, and we ran it for two weeks. We put out a, a, a Facebook, we created the Facebook page, and said, you can buy our biryani and our butter chicken. And we were inundated that after two weeks, we said, hold on, we're not used to this. We can't do this. <laughs> so we shut it down after two weeks. We were, the orders were so bad. So much. We just oh couldn't. We, we are not geared for this. Yeah. And so it lasted two weeks. We had some stunning <laughs> reviews. We had lots of orders. <laughs> but at the, at, in 2017, we still had publication. We're still doing events. We're doing all of those things. Yeah. And so we, we shut down the, the House of Kings. Oh so in, come fast forward 2020, mm. when we, we looked at it, that hold on, in, you know, we could potentially bring House of Kings back. Mm. Oh, wow. And now, with, with having started the last two months uh, cooking and you know, honing our skills, Let's do this. Mm. So that's how it started. And we just put out a note on Facebook and a couple of WhatsApp messages. 
and orders started coming in. Do you know wow. what? This is exactly wow, what people wow, say. Wow. People say that, you know, <laughs> good things happen over time, but great things sometimes happen like this. But because, I mean, there you are, uh, newspaper man, owner of the whole publication, <laughs> exactly. it's all yours, all of a sudden, nothing else to do. And, and let's be honest, cooking was, has been a passion, as, as you've been busy. You've been doing this for Food a long time. Food has always. You know, I, somehow I like the kitchen. Mm -hmm. I'm going to share something I, not very many people know. <laughs> I always like cooking. My first time I even baked something, I think I was in standard four, which is grade six today. Wow. Um, I baked a, a, a cake, and I baked the cake in a pot because we didn't have a baking tin. <laughs> oh, my word. So you wanted a round cake, you used a metal pot. And so I baked it, and it worked perfectly. And since then, I've always liked working in the kitchen. In fact, in my matric year, so you have to do speeches and yeah. book reviews. Yes. And so you had 10 topics. You had six books, four, whatever you could do that. I, I chose six books and four speeches, and two of my speeches was food. <laughs> one was how to make a Swiss roll, uh -huh. and the other one was how to cook a biryani. Wow. And I got 80% for the Swiss roll the recipe. <laughs> in my speech. Well done. So, again, it's if you're passionate about something, oh, yeah. it's how you share it, how you deliver it, it matters. It matters. And so, yeah, look, I've always had that, that fondness for food. Mm. Uh, and even during the publication time, I've traveled a lot around the world. Um, I've looked at food, I've tasted <laughs> food, I've engaged with chefs. So, you know, it, it, you pick up things. Now, okay. sir, let's, let, let's talk about this because you, you, you're touching on, on something. I know, I know the publication was, was your passion. Food, clearly your passion. Aren't you just, what, is, what makes you then different, even when, when desperate times are there, to actually bring your passion to the fore? Ah, that's important. Mm -hmm. Because remember, when, when you're sitting with desperate times, and, and, and lots of people say, how do I get started? Yeah. You know, I don't have this, I don't have that. You have passion. Everybody gets up in the morning, they mm. have passion. There's two things that, that matters in life. is you want to be happy and you have a passion. There we go. Yeah. Find that. You might be a gardener. That's mm. a passion. Do something with it. I remember when I was a youngster, one of my best friend's dad was unemployed. And he planted dhania, which is coriander, mm. and fenugreek, which is methi. Yeah. And this youngster used to, on a Friday afternoon, make them into bunches. And on a Saturday, go and sell it to the local neighborhood. And that's how wow. they fed themselves. And I'm talking 1983 or something. Wow. So Shoot. it's possible. Mm. You have a passion for something, that is your resource. Because if, you wanna, if you're sitting in, in, in a situation that you don't have anything, you have you. Mm. You have your passion. You have this and you have this. Use it. That's wow. where the resource sits. Oh, it's wow. not about, I need money, I need that, I need... It's all inside of you. How was, do you market? I was going to ask you, I was going to ask you, because a lot of people think actually starting a business would be, do we actually need money? But, and we're going to get into that, mm. because there is a switch for, for somebody when it's desperate. That Euro story, we're going to touch it, and you watching this, of course, you've definitely got a question. But I want to get into <laughs> the food. What do you cook? Tell me. <laughs> All right, so what do you I, do? I'm originally from Durban. Yeah. And so oh, yummy. my foods are oh. Durban. Durban style food, I call it Durban style food because it's, it is curries. But if you look at it, lots of people have different versions of curries. You travel the world, you'll taste different versions of curries. Oh, yeah. You go to India, you'll, every little town you go through, the city you go through, your, the taste and the flavors change. In Durban, we're unique. We've managed to create. Um, food that with the produce that was available remember a lot of our forefathers came here as slaves yeah and so they were limited in their resources and their produce and so they may do with what they have and mm. the curries and the biryanis that we have today is what they have given us and that's the recipes that came down through the generation that now I prepare okay so it's it is curries it's biryanis but it's comes from that region Okay. Uh, and that's what it is. So it, some of it is spicy and some not so spicy. And also the preparation methods are simplified in the way we would cook, as opposed to, say, a, a professional North Indian chef mm. from the subcontinent. He would prepare with different sources. You know, the process is so much different. End result is very close. Yeah, mm. yeah. Excellent. So what, what would be your favorite thing to cook then? I would say the biryani. I'm just... 
passionate about the biryani. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, it's a meat and rice dish. Yes, of course, yes. But there's so many variations around the world. Even here in South Africa, you go from different provinces, the biryani changes. Exactly. And the perception of a biryani, mm. you know. Uh, but the common thread is, it's meat and rice. Yeah, that is the common mm. thread. I want to ask you this, because one of the things that I know that, uh, that is, and as you say, especially when it comes to Durban food that is around mm. there, the one thing that they've really given the world as a matter, which I heard as somebody was just packing lunch to take to a golf course, I don't know how true it is, was a bunny chow. Exactly. The bunny chow is a Durban thing. In fact, I think oh in 2017, 2018, CNN, uh, it was listed as number 16 as the top 25 things of must eat in the world. Are you kidding me? Yes. Wow. It made it in that, in that list at CNN. So the bunny chow, yes, it was. Curry needed to be given as a takeaway. Yeah. Um, in those days, fish and chips was wrapped in newspaper yeah. as a parcel. You couldn't put a curry in that. Mm. Um, and so that's the way it is. You know, they scoop the bread and put the curry in. There's no containers. And we just watch it. And I mean, just to be clear, you bake your own bread. Oh, yes, of course. It's now, just saw that, yeah. bunny chow is, is scooped bread. And the ideal meal for a single person is a quarter loaf. Mm. And during lockdown, we were baking our own bread. And my eldest son is an engineer. Yeah. And he decided, let's make the perfect quarter loaf. Wow. And he designed the tins, manufactured those tins. So we make our own quarter loaf of bread, um, which is about 300 grams of bread. Wow. And we scoop that and fill curry into that. There we go. Oh, there, look at that. Wow. Oh, wow. So we're talking freshly home baked loaf here. Does it get better than that? Doesn't you it get better like, than that? And no, then no. you get the curry. Man, I must tell you the good thing about the bunny chow now is that, you know, when you start something and, and you, you, even if you start a business and you're preparing food and you sell, people will get tired of that. You have to innovate mm. all the time. time. Uh, so it's not, I can cook a pot of curry and there we will come and buy it. You have to innovate. Exactly. So with the bunny chow, yes, we do bake our own bread. You can buy a bunny chow on selected days uh, now. But what we've done is that if you have a party, if you're having a family event, or if you're having a fundraiser, you can let us know in advance and we come and do a build a bunny chow with you. So your your team building, you we come with the curry and the bread, and then we'll dish it. You 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 can either have it as us serve it to you, or have your people make it for you. Yeah, and and so. it's a fun exercise. It's interactive, so that's we've taken that to the next level. Okay. Yeah. And I like the way I like what you're saying about you know you constantly moving. With, with things, and I mean, the situation is very fluid, as we all know. I yeah. mean, that's all probably definitely one of the lessons from, from COVID as well, which is uh, brilliant. I've got a, I've got a, I've got a question that, uh, that, I, that I see on Facebook that I want to ask you quickly, because the food just looks brilliant. But I mean, <laughs> I'm definitely, well, I need to write this down. I'm going to order some bunny chairs. <laughs> I gotta, I'm definitely going to do it. Danelle Gillespie, Kogarani, morning, morning, morning. Thanks for Hello. watching. Uh, she says, oh, my word, do you deliver in Stellenbosch? I need a bunny chow ASAP. <laughs> she wants breakfast for bunny. <laughs> she wants a, a bunny chow for breakfast. That's what she wants. And I, I kind of agree with you. I, I kind of agree we, with you. Okay, so currently our, our operation works like this. Um, we take orders Tuesday to Friday at till 11 o'clock. Okay. Then we prepare freshly made food. Mm. So we don't cook a pot of food and wait for you to buy. We t get the orders, then you know you guaranteed oh, what wow. we're going to cook for you now. Mm. There's nothing that's from yesterday that we'll dish out today. So we take orders till 11 o'clock and then from between 4 and 6 we do deliveries and some people come and collect in Durbanville. That's where we are. You can understand it's logistical, uh, logistics yeah. that mm. make it work and Stellenbosch at the moment we're not there but we used to be in a market uh, uh, last year and they are doing some developments and we most probably would come back there. But to answer her question right now, unfortunately, I can't bring the bunny chow to you, <laughs> but we can make arrangements. Yeah. There we go. So if she there had to go. contact you, you, I mean, she can come and pick it up. Oh, yeah. Oh, wait. She's probably, no. in <laughs> <laughs> She's probably in a car already. She's probably in a car already. I definitely would be in the car already. <laughs> So I wanted to ask you because we saw we saw we and this was just a, it was just an interesting thing that Rhoda mentioned as well. No, you no, you ask him about the, the biryani stuff and you ask him. Oh, that's Rhoda's right, that's thing. right. <laughs> yeah. So there's always this chat and always in families, you know, and especially in our family as well. And we had a chat about this before as well. Acne and biryani. 
I mean, what is the difference? Seriously. Same, same difference, difference. Same Less, difference. Listen, listen, rice okay, and Same rice. difference. It's a meat and rice dish. Or if you're vegetarian, obviously you replace the meat mm. with vegetables. But so let's go. The acne is a one pot dish. Uh, when I say that, your meat is slow cooked a little bit. Mm. Uh, I'd say around 50%. Then you can put raw rice or half cooked rice. Okay. Um, and let that all steam together. Okay. And that's that's acne. Acne. Um, and on the biryani side, you there's two ways of doing a biryani. One is you, uh, it, it's the Hyderabadi biryani, where you layer meat, marinated meat, obviously lots of spices. Mm. You layer that, and then you put a steamed rice. Your rice needs to be around about say 70 percent to 80 percent cooked. cooked. You drop that on top, and then you seal the pot either with foil or with dough. Drop that, and then you slow cook that. Oh, wow. Um, depends on the quantities you're cooking. You can slow cook that for 15 to 20 minutes. Uh, but again, what you're using and also mm. the type of meat you're using. At a chicken biryani, you can do that in about 25 minutes from start to finish cooking process. What? The prep is on one side, but on the cooking process, mm. you can serve a, a, a layered biryani for in 25 minutes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, yep, yep. so it's just about timing mm. how you I, do that. And sorry, the I, I've got to ask you this because you use the word layered biryani. Layered biryani. Right. I, I grew up with biryani just like that and lentils. <laughs> right. So, okay, again, biryani um, is a, is a, it's, it's, it's a rice dish, but now in India, you got the north and the south. Mm. In the north, you get the layered biryani I spoke about. In the south, it's the biryani that's all mixed. It is a biryani, and uh, it's again, it's cooked the way an acne is cooked. Lentils, it's an addition that I, through, through my research and my traveling, is very unique to South Africa. What? Mm. Lentils and potatoes in a biryani is quite unique to SA. Uh, lots of restaurants abroad won't put potatoes, but and you'll find that uh, on the layered biryani, some would put um, egg, uh, mm. a boiled egg slice. It's all for dec yeah. decoration, yeah. yeah. It's just to make it look pretty. Um, but uh, that's really what the, the biryani that you're talking about, it's all one pot, and it's usually served with a doll yeah. or a dal. Yeah. And our biryani, the layered biryani, the one that I cook, would be served with a raita, which is a yogurt and spice, green yeah. spice mix. Oh, lovely. Uh, and that's that one there. Ah. Oh. That looks yummy. It okay, does look so it that's, does look that, that's basically brilliant. where the argument's we, gonna stop now. <laughs> we need to chow that. No, we have to, definitely. And chow, hence bunny. <laughs> <laughs> See what I did there? See what yeah. I did there? <laughs> Who's cooking now? Anyway, so there you are, you've, you've done this. And I mean, the wow. orders are coming through, the business is going yeah. well. So let's talk about this, Lushai, because, and, and let's, let, let's put our cards on the table. The pandemic came, this was hard. Mm. What what triggered that switch in you? Because you had to, you had to do something, right? Exactly. Mm. Look, again, go back 2020. We all stuck in our homes. You're limited in terms of where you can go. You could. You're limited in the times to mm. buy food. All of that. But ultimately, we all have to eat. So for mm. us, when lockdown was extended for our past the three weeks and we could see it's not happening, it's gone into May, we, we then realized that we had to find some way to generate revenue. And food was the common thing, you know, because restaurants were opening or we were allowed to deliver food and we knew where we, we were cooking food. And so we started that having some confidence that, you know, people would buy food because you have to eat. And so that's one of the things that that's sort of said, let's get this started. Um, I was fortunate that my whole family bought into it, the, both the boys and my wife, and we all got involved in prepping food and the deliveries. At one point, we had three vehicles running to do distribution. Sure. So wow. both the boys and I were running to do uh, the deliveries. And in, the, in terms of the preparation, everyone got involved. Mm. Um, so yeah, you know, it, it's something that, that you, you have to believe in. Mm. Uh, and once you, you find that that's what you're going to do, stay focused. Mm. Map away and go on that journey. Yeah, yeah. And, wow. and, and like you said, because this links to what we were talking about earlier, a lot of people who find them probably in a similar situation might be thinking, oh, I need big capital. I need mm. huge 
monies in order to to live out my passion mm. in your case this wasn't because you started off posting photos of what you've done exactly. and one or two of your connections mm. said where can we get this how exactly. do we get this absolutely you know uh, you don't need what is a business again you know I, I come back to that in the box what you box yourself you know some people think business is a major chain store or a franchise mm. and some people consider business a table somewhere where I can sell something uh, you need to step back and look at what you have what resources you have and how you can turn that into some sort of a revenue yeah wow. in our case it's the foods that's why I cook mm. Indian food it's what we eat at home yeah so you know when we put it out there you could limit it you could you know if you're gonna cook just two three extra meals and start the process yeah. why not yeah. because that's what it is it's about getting started lots of people sit and think okay I'm gonna start a food business so I have to cook for 100 people you don't know you're gonna sell 100 mm. aim small and build on that you know when you build a house you don't put all the walls together you start exactly. digging a foundation yeah then you put concrete then you mm. put brick and then you layer your wall you don't build the walls and the roof first so it's yeah. the same thing you need to follow just step back yeah. and and other thing that lots of people do is they look at everyone else that's already done what I've just said oh, so and they think it's easy or that person no, doing it. I don't have all of that no. you need to st stop and, and think how do I get there exactly you know what I'm saying and that's that's the the recipe yeah you need to you need to stop and think I want to do something and how or what do I have your resources it's very important to look what you have within you and around you whether it's friends families somebody would help you yeah and do you know what there, there's so much I mean look sure. at that look at yeah let's just marvel <laughs> yeah yeah that's our biryani <laughs> marvel and all of it right now. so yeah and I, and I want you to have a look as well <laughs> when you're watching this you will see that whatsapp number will give it to you as well so you can place your orders he'll do his things and your taste buds will be in for a sheer delight. So uh, don't forget, uh, you can do all those orders uh, are done via WhatsApp or telephone. The number is there, 062-964-46-6406. Oh, uh, oh, that number is wrong there. 6406, there's a final few digits there. Yeah, that's all. Right, right. Okay, cool. That's right. Anyway, we're going to get the number right because this is like a hotline number here. I was going to say, I'm getting so confused. Yeah, that is there. I want to ask you this because Definitely, I, I know you as a very passionate individual, and that is the why it would make perfect sense for me that your household, as you mentioned, they all bought into this so easily, because I would I would assume that passion would just run through everybody. You you had the idea of doing this in 2017, correct? And 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 you just yeah you just never because you were tied up with other things as well. Mm. Then all of a sudden, now you're not tied up. You have the thing. You love out your passion. passion. And I think this is, this, is, this is a very, very important thing because that is what you've got to do because that's what gets you up in the morning. Let me ask you this. That you would have done this eventually, but when, uh -huh. when, when your hands were tied now with lockdown, this was good Trigger, because, yeah, yeah. because it was already, you were already springboarded for this. It exactly. is something that has been in our mind. Mm. You know, we, had, we always said that at some point we'll do this. Mm. You know, the concept that we had after looking at, in 2017, when, when House of K sort of caught us off guard there and said, we said, okay, stop it. We always parked it and said, at some point, we will do our House of K where we can do like a dinner for eight. Mm. Then we, you know, we just invite eight people and cook for them. Uh, and that, maybe we would have done that, the wife and I would have done it when we retired. Mm. And so that once or twice a week, <laughs> we just cook for eight buddies, they can come and we'll feed them. Yeah. Um, so we, it was always there. We, we, we've been thinking about it. But you're right. When it comes to when it came to pandemic, the trigger was there to say, hold on, bring that forward. You need to do this now. And you've exactly. already spoken about it. You, you know, lots of us dream, mm. and it's a good thing to dream. Um, but sometimes, you know, you start putting it together. Mm. Take those dreams and bring make them reality. And so we are forced into it in 2020. We happy with where we're at. In fact. From 2020 to 2021, both the boys were involved in the business, and we were, you know, because both of them uh, were unemployed, lost their jobs through pandemic, and so we continued running this. And but then 2021, things started turning, and both the boys went back to their careers and work, 
And so, again, we had to find a way in how do we manage this. Oh, wow. So instead of mm. seven days a week, we then change the model. Instead of lunch and dinner, we only do dinner. So again, it's you, it's oh, you. Yeah. It's how you manage your time. Yeah. Oh, wow. But you're also not sacrificing on quality mm. and efficiencies. So we now only do a dinner order. We don't do lunch anymore. Mm. We just do dinners. And that's why we say order till 11, and it gives us enough time to prep for you. And between four and six, we, we deliver oh, your lovely. freshly cooked yeah. food. Fresh food. Yeah. Mm. And then, because we're family people, we don't cook on a Saturday. Mondays, we take off. We don't cook on a Monday, but it allows us to do shopping, mm. topping up our groceries, whatever we need to do. Manage. On a Saturday, it's family time. We then chill. The boys are home. We, you need that mm. balance. Sunday, we just do a Sunday lunch. Again, it's not a f when, we, when we were full steam in 2020, 2021, we had a menu that you could choose from. There was about, I think, 12 items on that menu. Wow. Now, it's set. So on a Tuesday, we'll just do chicken dishes. Oh, there we go. On a Wednesday, we'll do lamb dishes. So, and then our customers have also become used to it. So mm. again, it's about managing your resources. Yeah. Don't, don't exactly. get excited that, you know, I'm going to lose the customer. The, your customer that you served well will stay with we'll you. Will stay with you. That's mm. the trick. So we, yeah, we, we then separate Mondays, uh, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. We put out at least two items, and that's it. So it's mm. manageable, and we can deliver. Now we're introducing the whole eventing and we'll cook for corporates. We can cook for up to 50 people. Wow. We're also now uh, ready to cook for fundraisers. So if you're on a sports club or something, you're always looking for fundraisers. We, we've so done a few churches and, and mosques in the northern suburbs where we give you the bulk at a certain price and you then mark up to your members. Oh, wow. uh, and it's not you will make money. They, I mean, there was uh, one society that took from us and they made two and a half thousand rand on a Sunday lunch. And they were so happy that they want to do it on a monthly basis. So it's small things, but mm. again, we, we then found a way that we can then allow people to use it as fundraisers. And then the corporate side, if you want to have a team build, we can bring in the bunny, build a bunny amongst <laughs> the staff. Um, yeah, so those are the kind of opportunities. Exciting. Oh, yeah. We, we do a bit of finger lunch. Yeah. Uh, people want some snacks and platters. We do different things. What you're looking on your screen is, is our own chicken kebabs. Uh, and on the other side is our beef kebab in a, in a mini mm. roti. Roti. Yeah. Oh, lovely. Um, yum, yum, yum. I'm it looks, hungry it now, looks people. all very good. <laughs> is it too early to have a bunny chow? Eh? No, I don't <laughs> never. think so. Dal, one it's for never breakfast. too early for me for any curries. I uh, same love here. my curries. Same oh, here. I enjoyed the show. <laughs> yeah, same here. This is, yeah, this is, this is really good. Pa parting ways, and I've got two questions for you. What, what, what is next? Because purely where House of K finds itself now, oh, born yeah. out of, and let me put it this way, with all due respect, that means House of K is, is an exciting, this is this is an innovative, uh, innovative business, as we've uh, heard you say, obviously, there's so much joy and passion that goes in, but it was born out of a disaster with, with what the pandemic mm. has sure. resulted for, for a lot of us. Looking at this now, you, you never thought, that, I mean, this is beyond your wildest dreams, yeah, it might encompass a lot of your passion. Where do you see this going? <laughs> Look, for us, uh, House of K is uh, it's, it's, it's a business for us. It, it managed to keep us or, or, or the tills uh, ringing. It, it generates a, a bit of revenue for us. Whether we want to grow it to uh, bigger than that, I'm not sure. Because, again, I, I like to balance my life. Mm. Um, and whether I want to get into a bricks and mortar setup with a takeaway or a restaurant, it's not that. Mm. I think I'll go back and slowly do the thing that I dreamt about was the dinner for eight. Mm. I think that's where I'll end it. Um, if at some point, you know, we, we think of distributing food packaged, maybe that could be an option, but it's, uh, it's not going to be a bricks and mortar kind of mm. shop. We're not going to go into takeaways. Uh, we, we like what we're doing. It's manageable for us. It allows us to deliver quality product. Mm. Um, so that's for us, we, we're happy with where it is. Yeah, the final phase would be the dinner for eight. I think that's exclusive kind of opportunity. And people can come and share our passion, talk to us, um, share some inspiration, uh, and, and enjoy good food. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. And my final question, because I know Rhoda's got questions. Oh, but that's my no, final no, question. No. I promise, I promise, I promise. <laughs> if you had to go back and talk to 20-year-old Nusad Khan, what would you say to him? <laughs> No, that's an, it shouldn't be a difficult thing. I, I always, from the time I was in school, so yes, at 20, easy. Follow your dreams, stay focused, and do what you have to do. 
I chose not to go to university when I finished school because I wanted to do something that will get my dad out of the kind of work that he was. He was a driver for a fruit and veg market. He worked from five in the morning to eight at night. Mm. And it was my passion from school days to get him out of that. And I started working in 1983. It took me three years to get him out of that because I started oh, wow. a, a newspaper distribution business and I pulled him out of that. Oh, so wow. for me, that was my graduation. Hey yo, wow. Wow, there you what go. A story. Wow, I'm inspired. I should have known that before this. I mean, there's inspirational I'm so stories. Inspired. I'll write your book. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's something Rafik Memon has been telling me about. And yeah, maybe I must at some point. I think you should. I think you me. should. Definitely. Make a movie. <laughs> I'll get Rafik to die. A Hollywood movie. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. I hope I can do the dancing. <laughs> I'll, I'll do the dancing. <laughs> I'll, yeah. A Bollywood movie. Where's the oh, cake now? Oh, lovely. <laughs> that will be the house of K, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Listen here, Rhoda, do you have any questions? I don't. I'm just hungry right now. <laughs> <laughs> All that food just made me extremely hungry. <laughs> it is, on, on behalf of both of us, it's been a real pleasure talking to oh, you. Yeah. And oh, it's yeah. a Very truly, much. truly oh, yeah. inspirational story. It's a pity now it. I've discovered this thing about the, the newspaper business and the delivery with dad and all of this. Only now. now. But that is a pattern. Let me just say from where I am, mm. the publication, I know the amount of dedication and the passion that mm. went into the next 48 oh, yeah. hours. The people that was all involved with it are phenomenal people. These exactly. are these are the, the kind of people you want in anything. But it stems from you. It stems from you. And th that is definitely the thread that comes through everything from from everything you've done your whole life. Long may it continue oh, yeah. and please remain the inspiration you are. It is absolutely joyous talking to you. Mm. No, so thanks thank for you coming on. No, thank, thank you, you so very much. much. Really thank you. appreciate the opportunity. Uh, absolutely Thanks. brilliant. So there you have it. Uh, you gotta okay. go you gotta go check it out. Um, you gotta go check it out, House of K. That is what it's called, and uh, definitely make the orders. Uh, we, you got the, the details, so you gotta place your order before 11, 11 a.m. Be, before Tuesdays 11 to Fridays. Tuesdays, Tuesdays to Fridays. Fridays. You still got a bit of time to do so, and that is it. So, uh, what, 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 what is tomorrow, chicken? Chicken Tuesdays. Chicken, chicken Tuesdays. Chicken Tuesdays. Chicken. There we That's go. Chicken, Ooh. chicken curry. You can have butter chicken on a Tuesday. All right, yum, so yum, there yum. you go. It doesn't get better than that. So you've got to definitely call this number. I'll give you the number quickly, which is 064-962-6406. That is uh, the number that you will dial and uh, you place your order. We will have that number on the screen for you again, but definitely get it in though as soon as you can so you can get it. That's 62 964 Six four zero six. Definitely get that number in. Check them out on Facebook as well, which is uh, House of K. Mm -hmm. And uh, for for all your orders, man, this is just absolutely brilliant. As they say, there you get people who love to eat and eat people who eat to live. Yeah. But either way, <laughs> you've got to be both of this. May your passion carry you through. Once again, thank you very much uh, to the comments and questions that came through. Thank you for watching. Thank you to our special guest, the side count, for joining us. Oh, yeah. From myself, Dougal. Bye bye. Yeah. From Rode, Goodbye. Bye-bye. Ta-da, everybody. See you.